right, let's uh, let's move on. So this is just to reinforce then uh, what I was talking about just now. And this is IEEE. So this is from my, my PhD final report. And in the course, I actually have my, my report is in there attached. You can go and have a look at it. It's all IEEE. It's all sort of it's an engineering PhD. But the principles, again, what I want to just sort of communicate here is that on the left, you have a, a paragraph from my, my final report. And on the right hand side, you have a section of my reference list Okay, at the end of the document. And message I want to give you is that the the site as you write process that you use and why I've advised you not to do it manually is what you see on the left hand side in my paragraph there and the IEEE standard is a, a number just a number that appears in the paragraph and the number refers to the reference the list of references at the end so when I talk about the other studies, 44 to 49, I list those five or six sources and somebody needing that work or wanting more information about those studies would have to go page through to the end reference list and go and find numbers 44 to 49 to see what I'm talking about. In humanities, right, you will actually see the author and the year author year, author year, author year. And I mean, just logically, the reason there is that humanities is very much more interested in human beings, the authors. So they put the name there. Engineers tend to be a little bit, uh, let's say, more technical, less interested in the, the author and more interested in the, the result, the content, the findings. I'm not saying humanities isn't, but there's just a slightly different emphasis. And Medicine is going to look different to legal, is going to look different to architecture, is going to look different to any of these other faculties. So you open a journal or a final report in any different faculty, the fundamental difference is in the paragraph where you see the notation for finding the other source that the person is talking about. And then in that list of references at the end, how it is described. So in IEEE, you can see the surname, first letter, title, year okay um or if for, for 58 for example there the conference um and the publisher okay but the beauty of it is as long as i'd loaded my metadata in correctly for all my references and remember this is the investment up front right so as long as when i loaded those references into endnote i made sure that the metadata was correct that was the only time i ever had to worry about it when I'm writing, tick tack, tick tack, tick tack, trying to get that paragraph out, sitting in the middle of the night, chasing a deadline, whatever the case may be, and I think, oh, I must reference those other studies, and I know in the back of my mind, and I'll teach you a trick just now about, about how to think about references that you want to bring into your studies, and I know there was those five or six studies that are relevant to this. All I had to do was go and click search for that author. Okay, that was the one, bing, search author, bing, that one, and then... Because it's multiple, it just lists it like that, 40, 40, 49, or 51 and 53, for example, because it alphabetizes um, or lists those in a certain sequence. Again, uh, the humanities one, I think, alphabetizes it. Engineering one, I think, does it by year. I'm not too sure. These, it, it, it applies all the rules. If I had to then go and you know, page through my PDFs and my folders and then go and extract the year and think about you know, just putting in that brackets of those six references there would have taken me half an hour. And if, and, and remember this, when you add a reference earlier on in the document, in engineering, it, it'll push all the other references out by another number. So you can see there, as you're working through an IEEE formatted final report for references, this, the first reference will be one then the next reference will be two as you work your way through the document. If you refer to that same reference again, it's two again. But if I add another reference in earlier on, I have to go and renumber every single time I've cited that reference anywhere else in the document. Whereas because I just click the button in EndNote, it does that all automatically for me. So in the course, I give you a screen demonstration and I go through my final report and I show you and I talk about these things in more detail and I include the reference section at the end and, and, and go through it in some detail. So that's really just what I wanted to show you there. Now, this is then just a little bit more detail, which shows you, like I've been talking about just now, 
the sort of pop-up window that you get inside Word when you want to cite from your EndNote source library. So I've been writing, tick, 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 and I think of those other studies, and I click my EndNote button, and then up it pops. That's, this is what you will see, okay? And I type in at the top there, and you must have some idea of, of, of some information about the source that you want to cite, and typically it's going to be the author, and I've actually got some of my uh, publications there. So I type in Alchemer, and it lists all the sources that I've got in my EndNote library. Remember, and you have to invest the time to load your EndNote library or your source library on whatever system you're using. You have to do that, right? I mean, and you'll quickly pick it up if the wrong information is coming through because when you look at it in your reference list, you'll see that it's, it's, it's wrong or your supervisor will pick it out. Steven's got a question here. Does it make a difference to reference an archival source using EndNote rather than doing it manually? Again, with details around clue and citing in-text archival sources. Okay. Stephen, I want you to hold that thought because my Google Scholar hack, I'm 90% certain will solve that because I think I know where you're coming from. Uh, so let's just hold that thought and we'll come, we'll come back to that question. I'll keep the question up here on the screen. Okay. So this is just showing you the EndNote plugin inside Word. Okay, and I, this is a live or a recorded interactive demo in the course that you can go through for more information. But it's just showing you the EndNote window that pops up inside Microsoft Word. And now, because I've searched on an author, I can scroll down through all the sources that I have for that author and I can click whichever one I want to use. I get a preview of the metadata. So for any source that's highlighted there, it shows me at the bottom the metadata that's already loaded in the library. When I click that, it will cite it for IEEE as a reference number, and it will reorder and renumber all the other numbers for me, and it will add that source that I've collect selected into the reference. So if you see, if I just take Stephen's comment away there, you'll see I've split my screen. I'm writing in the one in the main part of the document. I'm viewing my reference library in the bottom. Click it, boom, and it pops up as a citation in the paragraph and as an extra reference uh, in the referencing section.